Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Adrienne Mertens. I'm the Chief Communications and Intergovernmental Relations Officer for the City of Santa Rosa. Uh, thank you for taking time to be here with us tonight. Uh, this meeting is to provide you with more information on the settlement funds the city has received from PG&E. Uh, the funds are a result of the claim the city filed with PG&E to recoup the city's damages and costs from the 2017 wildfires. Um, so tonight uh, you will have a chance to ask more questions about the settlement funds as well as our status in recovery and rebuilding. Um, and also equally important to provide your input on how you think uh, the Santa Rosa City Council should prioritize use of the funds. Um, so for the agenda this evening, I am gonna go through a few housekeeping items. I will introduce our panelists, um, and then I'm going to turn it over for the background presentation that will provide more information on the settlement funds, um, we'll provide a status update on our recovery and rebuilding projects, um, including the ones that remain unfunded. Um, and we'll also give a quick overview of the additional unmet needs that have been identified in Santa Rosa. Um, so for housekeeping items, um, as community members do join this meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Uh, your microphone and your camera are both off and muted. Uh, only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Uh, if you are calling in from a telephone for privacy concerns, the host will be renaming your viewable phone number to citizen and only the last four digits will show on the screen. Uh, once our presentation of the background information concludes, we will open for Q&A and for input. At that time, I will ask you to raise your hand in Zoom and our Zoom host, who I will introduce in just a moment, will move one by one down the list of attendees with their hands raised. And once you have asked your question and shared your input, uh, the Zoom host will lower your hand. Um, so now I'll introduce our staff that are participating this evening. Uh, so first we have Alan Alton, our interim chief financial officer from our finance department. Alan will be providing the background presentation. Uh, then our, we have our assistant city manager and director of transportation and public works, Jason Nutt. And from the fire department, we have uh, fire chief, Tony Gossner, our fire marshal, Scott Moon, and our assistant fire marshal, Paul Lowenthal. And then from our housing and community services department, we have our director, Dave Gwine. Um, and then our two hosts who are assisting us tonight our Zoom hosts are Trisha Mason, uh, who will coordinate the question and answer part um, and public input part of the meeting. And then we have Elisa Rawson, who is uh, taking all of the notes and collecting the input that is provided tonight. Uh, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Alan to begin his presentation. And we'll give our hosts just a moment to do that transition. Thanks, Adrian. All right, so uh, welcome everybody who's here. Um, as Adrian said, we uh, this is uh, our first um, community meeting uh, and and a kickoff of our um, uh, collecting public input on the use of of our uh, settlement money from PG&E. So the next slide, please. Um, so, uh, as you know, the, uh, the city filed a claim with the, uh, with PG&E, um, and we were awarded $95 million of, uh, settlement funds, uh, um, relating to the 2017 fire. Uh, we set that money aside, uh, um, it can be used for, uh, really any purpose. You can go on to the next slide, please. Um, uh, there are no restrictions and, and really uh, above all the city council wants to hear uh, from uh, the community on uh, how to use it. Um, you know, again, with no restrictions that, that leaves a lot open, but clearly uh, uh, building up our, 
uh, fire resiliency uh, uh, is a direct nexus to the um, why we receive the funds. And uh, there are a number of unmet needs that are in that area. And so the next slide, we'll get into those. And one more, please. So, uh, so there's a number of projects that are currently unfunded. We, uh, they were either uh, applied for and denied by FEMA uh, or still in um, the appeal process uh, with FEMA. Uh, you know, just to set context on that, FEMA has a number of, of rules that they go by uh, when we actually start setting up projects uh, to have them approved. And, um, you know, and this isn't a knock on them, but they, they are very uh, good at uh, responding to hurricanes uh, or floods, um, but uh, wild, uh, uh, wildland urban fires they are not and it's new to them uh, so they uh, they're they're trying to adapt rules to to this and and we struggled with it uh, uh, with this fire hopefully um, in the future they'll be able to change their their rules but right now we're dealing with what with what we uh, um, with their current rules and we were denied some projects the fire station Five is one that's uh, currently on our second appeal. Um, the idea is to uh, move the fire station to a different area that would uh, be more hardened against um, and, and safe, I guess, and gets uh, forest fires in the area and yet still provide protection uh, uh, to the areas where uh, the old fire station five was. Uh, that uh, we did receive some insurance money on this, um, uh, but the remainder of the cost, uh, we're estimating around $14.5 million uh, uh, to rebuild. Uh, next slide. Uh, there were a number of, of uh, roads that were damaged during the uh, debris mission, and uh, those were uh, uh, denied by FEMA. Um, uh, there's so we're looking at a total of about $24 million uh, for those. Uh, next slide. Also, we have, uh, we had fire damage or sidewalk repairs that needed. Um, we're estimating that right now at about 4.1 million. Um, again, these are, these are estimates, uh, um, uh, but it gives you kind of an idea of the cost magnitude that we're looking at for each of these. Uh, next one. And uh, also there are hazardous trees and, and uh, we're looking at uh, the whole tree removal uh, and mission and we're estimating around uh, uh, $5.1 million to either do that or support that program. So for the next one, please. So those are some examples of, of uh, very specific areas within the fire rebuild uh, or projects within the fire re rebuild that we can um, address. Uh, currently do not have funding sources for them other than uh, the PG&E funds. Uh, so those are, are there for your information. Uh, but there are a number of other ones. Um, uh, uh, there, there are areas within the community that are outside of the burn zone that would, uh, that would greatly benefit from this type of, of uh, uh, funding. Uh, vegetation management and fuel reduction is one of them. Uh, uh, evacuation routes uh, and improvements in the Wui is another one and, and uh, on down the line. But there's also a more uh, community base. The way that, that we look at this is that, yes, there was a very direct uh, uh, tie to the, um, uh, to the burn areas that, that should be addressed, but the fire affected the community as a whole. So we're looking for that type of input. Um, and uh, so such as 
uh, um, using uh, some money to jumpstart affordable housing or uh, or other housing opportunities um, uh, and uh, looking at infrastructure throughout the, the city with generators and, and dealing with uh, the emergencies that we have now. Uh, PSPSs are becoming a regular uh, event and uh, to be able to have uh, the generators to be able to uh, make a quick transition when the power goes off is, is an important thing. Um, we're looking at, uh, uh, there's the possibility of supporting uh, businesses and, and workforce recovery through business loans or grant programs. Uh, uh, there are community assets that are needed such as libraries and, and community centers. Uh, uh, there are homeless services, uh, road repairs that are outside of the, of the recovery area um, and park improvements and broadband internet, all of, all of those types of things are meet a, a number of, of community needs as, uh, as well as the fire area needs. Um, nothing that is, uh, that's provided here is, uh, you know, set in stone. Uh, all of these uh, uh, categories or, or types of projects are, are just, they're that, they're ideas. They give the council a direction of which to go. So our job in here is to answer as many questions as we can, have me fumble through some slides, and then uh, um, collect all the information that we can to bring back to the council. So we, uh, we have two meetings coming up uh, that will do that. We have a long-term financial policy and audit subcommittee. We meet there on Thursday, October 8th, where we will um, present uh, this information. We'll have the digital survey results by then. We will have finished all of our community meetings. So we'll be able to uh, provide that um, information to the subcommittee. The subcommittee is made up of three council members they, they are public meetings. Um, and then on the 27th, we'll be in front of the full council uh, with probably a more detailed uh, um, report out on all of this information. So with that, the next slide. Uh, so what I said, we, we need input and that's why we're all here. So with that, I think I'm ready to turn that back over to Adrian. Thanks, Alan. Um, so Alan did mention a digital survey, so I'll just say about that. Um, in addition to this community meeting and two others that we have planned for next week, uh, we are running a digital survey to collect input from the community. Um, and I'll share that URL for that at the end. Um, when council gave staff the direction to go out and collect input, they did note that it was really important to them that we uh, did hear, that they were able to hear directly from our fire survivor community, especially that's, um, one of the reasons we set up tonight's meeting and we've been doing special targeted outreach to make sure we, we do reach our fire survivors specifically in addition to all of the community. Um, so I just wanted to note that before we open it up for Q&A and input, um, and I'm going to give Trisha a chance now to um, get us transitioned into that portion of the meeting, but this is a time to ask any questions. We've asked all the panelists that are here um, to participate tonight, should, should there be questions for their areas, and this is also a time to voice your input and how you feel council should prioritize funding. Um, you know, talk about specific projects um, or ideas that you have. And again, we have uh, one of our Zoom co-hosts, Elisa, taking notes on everything that uh, you'll be sharing with us so that we can compile those into our report for council. All right, so Trisha, I'll let you take it from here. The first speaker will be Ann Barber. I'm going to allow you to speak. Please unmute your microphone and, identi and identify yourself for public record. 
Um, my name is Annie Barber, and I am the vice president of Coffee Strong. Um, <clears throat> so I have a couple things to say real quick. I'll try to be as quick as possible. Um, we did our own survey at one point we, uh, for Coffee Park, and we came up with the Hopper Corridor needing to be done, road slurries. Um, there's a creek that needs to be taken care of, um, uh, uh, sidewalks and curbs. I think those were the four major, there was one more in there. Um, I have no pro, I, I understand that the city is in, in a deep hole and that they need to use some of this money. And I really don't personally have an issue with that. As long as we can make sure that we have as much fire hardiness as we can, and that we can at least touch, touch base on some of the things that each community, meaning Fountain Grove, us, uh, Hidden Valley needs. Um, the question I would have would be to Paul Lowenthal, and I would like to know what he feels like needs to be done um, within the next, say, 24 months to make us a more, more adept at, at handling these fires and, and um, how much resources we need for that. All right, thank you for the question. I'm sure as uh, you and a number of other members from Coffee Strong are aware, uh, we did just complete the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Uh, that was a project that uh, Fire Marshal Moon had initiated. Uh, we were lucky uh, that that was a, want the, a grant that we did receive uh, funding for, and we were able to bring that back to council and get that approved last month. Uh, mm -hmm. so goal now is to start implementing a lot of the activities that have been identified in the plan. Um, we're looking very closely um, at the priorities and uh, the scope, different scopes of work that our consultants uh, that, I, that put the plan together identified. Uh, right now, uh, one, a couple of the key elements that we're looking at are uh, what we refer to as hardening our evacuation routes. So looking at fuel reduction uh, programs uh, throughout multiple large evacuation routes, uh, both in and outside the wildland interface. Uh, we're looking at vegetation management projects um, within our wildland urban interface, um, both uh, in open space and on private property, where people can work on uh, mitigating their threat and risk of wildfire um, around their immediate residence. And the biggest and probably largest, most complex issue is going to be actually uh, mitigating and reducing fuels, both in the city limits and outside the city limits. And the plan identifies a number of what are referred to as compartments. Uh, and the compartments are located across the city. Um, and so um, moving forward on uh, implementing those different compartment fuel reduction programs is also gonna be a critical element. Through the plan, we identified uh, the biggest and largest threat to our community right now is the unburned fuels between uh, the nuns and the tubs. So kind of, uh, it would be to the north and northeast of Rincon Valley and Skyhawk. So that's gonna be an area that we're gonna look very closely at uh, for kind of priorities for fuel reduction, uh, because that is right now what we identify as the, the one of the greatest uh, threats to our community right now. So there's a lot of work um, that's to be done. Uh, both Chief Moon and myself uh, will be presenting to the public safety committee meeting uh, tomorrow on uh, our vision of a five-year plan um, and that will outline uh, kind of what we see as the needs uh, moving forward over the, at least the next five years. That's the, the life of the Community Wildfire Protection Plan that we have right now. Um, at that point, hopefully in five years, we'll be able to have knocked out um, as many of the kind of 48 actionable items that were identified for the community um, and kind of go from there. So that's a really long answer, but there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, the kind of the biggest takeaway that we've uh, that's come from this that we want to make sure our community knows is that we're we have not just been sitting back and, and waiting for these funds to see how they're going to play out. Uh, the city has uh, for the last number of years, both before and uh, primarily after the Tubbs fire put together multiple grant applications at both the state and federal level. Uh, and believe it or not, the only grant that we've actually received in the last four or five years uh, was in 2015. Uh, was for the development of a, um, a educational program that we were awarded in 2016 and rolled out some vegetation management education before the 17 fires. 
since the 17 fires, the only grant that we've had approved is the development of the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Um, we've been unsuccessful at both the state and federal level uh, for, for funds to jumpstart a program here locally. It's a little disappointing. Um, you would think that Santa Rosa being kind of the home of the largest, the most destructive wildfire at the, of the state at the time would have been a prime recipient from it. Um, but we have not had much luck. Regardless, um, even as we're having these community meetings, we did just submit uh, four additional notice of interests for uh, both federal and state funding for um, some of the programs that we just discussed. Great. So are you, are we still, are you needing some of this money to fortify our situation? Yeah, what we've learned uh, through the grant process is that um, there, it's definitely not a guarantee. That's, that is, that is our takeaway is that um, although we do continue to apply for grants, they're not a guarantee. And we've now waited a number of years to try and push a program forward. And we're to the point now where we, we can't continue to wait. The plan has been approved and the plan is only good for five years. Um, yeah. Well, like I said, at the same time as we're, you know, efforts going in to figure out how to disperse these funds, we're going to continue to apply for, for grants, but um, we need money to get, to get going. And, and this could be a collective thing between the city and the county, correct? For fuel reduction? For, yeah, for, for the finances coming from both sections to- Oh, make I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so yes. So the, the county is also de determining how to spend their money, correct? Yeah. Um, and there is work that we've identified in our plan that would uh, rely on county cooperation. So there will be work that needs to be done both through our community wildfire protection plan and the work that we need to be done. The county is also in the middle of putting together their community wildfire protection plan and they will see some of the things, the same things we've seen. So there's going to be some a need for some shared um, shared costs for some of those areas that impact both the city and county. Great, thank you very much. Okay, Jeff, I'm going, you're going to be the next speaker followed by Steve. Please unmute your microphone and identify yourself for public record. Yeah, uh, my name is Jeff Okrecki. I um, live in Coffee Park. I'm the founder of Coffee Strong. Uh, thank you guys for taking this, um, taking your time uh, to hear us out and ask us our opinion. That actually means a lot uh, to be involved in a process like this. Um, so uh, to kind of piggyback off of what uh, Annie had said, um, the things that were important to us and important to our community, um, we did receive uh, hundreds of responses um, to the survey that we put out and it was a part of the communication we sent in to uh, council members and to city staff. So um, I'm sure you could probably dig that up uh, word for word if you, if you guys wanted to. But um, some of the major things that we wanted to do were, were Hopper Corridor, um, redo that, um, miscellaneous street repairs, uh, that's primarily because of the burn scars and even without the burn scars, um, the PCI uh, status of those is it's fairly low over in Coffee Park and then you put the burn scars on top of it and it, it, it not only looks horrible but uh, it's not great condition either. Um, we also um, want to do the miscellaneous curb repair from wherever FEMA or whomever else drove over something and broke it. Um, possibly uh, we had discussions about some sort of um, reimbursement process for those that didn't want to wait this is three years now, um, but took money out of their, um, out of their insurance uh, to repair their sidewalks and streets for stuff that was already damaged. Um, and then also uh, Piner Creek mitigation. Um, it's uh, pretty bad, pretty overgrown. Uh, we, we'd like to see some of that, you know, reduced down as it's the closest, um, you know, I, I guess would be kind of fuels to us, but it borders the entire east side of our, of our neighborhood. So um, if we could get something uh, like that going, that'd be great. Uh, you know, I'm all for the evac routes and, and the tree mitigation and the, um, taking out the trees and the vegetation management. I think that's all great stuff. But my, my overarching concern is, you know, in, these, in this presentation that we just had was, um, and, and while I appreciate it is, you know, a safer and, and more resilient community, um, but to get safer from something, you have to start at a net zero. It's not like you take away everything and then 
you know, you get to a net 90% and it's all automatically safer. It's, you got to get to a net zero and then move forward to make it safer and, and make it whole. And that's what I, what um, Copy uh, Strong and, and myself want us to do is to try to fix these things that are still outstanding and also use the funds to help make us uh, safer and stronger going forward. Okay, Steve, I'm giving, allowing you to talk. Please unmute your microphone and identify yourself for public record. Hi, my name is Steve Rahm. I am current, the current president of Coffee Strong and been, uh, uh, lived in Coffee Park for off and on for 20 years. Um, my main purpose for speaking today is just to recognize that, um, however, there's a lot of things in the city that needs to be funded um, everything from homelessness to mental illness to um, wildfire hardening. I feel like the um, unmet, the, these funds are for the unmet needs due to the fire and that I would like to see those funds be used for those issues or those needs first before we spend it on um, the other items. I think that there's sufficient money to provide, um, uh, as Jeff said, uh, you know, Piner Creek is a big issue and, a, and could potentially be a problem. The Hopper Corridor with the sidewalks and trees that we used to have, the sidewalk and curb replacement. Um, one of the things that, you know, as being a member of this organization and a, and a wonderful community that we have is that, you know, we all gave, you know, we've, we've uh, received monies through grants. We've helped uh, get our park built. We've helped raise money and we just want to be whole and to be whole we just need the city to finish that last uh last mile and uh i think that we're out of the overall funds i put some budgets together you know with 1422 coffee park homes um you know i i looked at the budgets of what it would take to repair those things and it feels like you know coffee park is only 10 percent of the overall money and if we could get whole, you know, those other funds could be used for the, um, the amazing effort that all the city workers have to figure out to spend that money. I mean, everything from general fund, like I said, is city expenses. So um, I just wanted to speak my mind as far as that. That's all I got. Thank you, Steve. At this time, if you have any questions or comments, please raise your hand. I am seeing no hands raised at this time. Okay, um, Brian, I'm going to allow you to talk. Please unmute your microphone and identify yourself for public record. Hi, I just got a new microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. I'm Brian Bouchon. I'm a homeowner, a stakeholder here in Coffee Park. Um, I've been working on a few projects, and the only one I'm really going to discuss is the sidewalk on San Miguel. Um, I'd worked with Jason Nutt, and he put me in touch with Rob Sprinkle on that. And I appreciate that, Jason. Thank you. Um, Last year, we were able to do the north side of San Miguel and fix those berms and get that safe for uh, the students to travel to uh, Shaper School. The south side where everyone actually walks is currently still undone. They have berms that have been pushed by various uh, trucks, FEMA trucks and all that, uh, making it unsafe on the south side for uh, kids and pedestrians of all sorts to walk to school, walk down to the school to use uh, the fields there. Um, I'd like to see maybe a sidewalk put in over there and over, uh, I know the creek was talked about, the creek there is a mess. Um, on that south side, if we can uh, turn that 
uh, right where it passes over the creek into a small pedestrian bridge for a little more safety. Um, one example is I watched an elderly gentleman walking across that area, which the walkway is about a foot and a half to walk. And one of the larger trucks mirror hit him in the back of the head. So it's really not a safe area for pedestrians, much less our children walking to school. Um, that'd be a good thing, I think, to get addressed, as well as fixing up a coffee creek. Um, it looks horrible. And Paul, you just talked about fuel reduction. Well, that's a mess of weeds that's not being addressed and burn trees all the way down. I don't really have anything else, but thank you for your time today. And thank you for uh, putting this on. Thank you, Brian. At this time, I see no hands raised. So if you have any last questions or comments, please raise your hand. If not, I will turn that back over to Adrian. At this time, there's no hands raised. Okay. Um, well, I want to thank everyone for taking time tonight to tune in and thank you to our panelists uh, for being present um, and participating for questions. Um, I do want to um, actually bring up the survey link screen if we could, Tricia, just so we have that posted for everyone to see. Um, so this is actually a URL to our project information page. So you can get more background information on the settlement funds. Uh, the presentation that Alan provided is also available on that website. And on this website, you can access the survey. Um, and I encourage all of you to take it if you haven't. And please share it with your neighbors um, and others so that they can also take it too. Um, you have until uh, through October 4th to complete the survey and after that we'll be closing it so we can spend time compiling all of the results um, and putting the data together into a report for council. Um, and Alan did mention those two upcoming public meetings where city council members will be considering all of the input received. The first again was on October 8th, that's the long-term financial policy an audit council subcommittee meeting and then the October 27th regular city council meeting and information on both of those meetings is also posted on that website. Um, and that's all I have. So I just want to thank everyone again for joining us and um, we will have the information posted um, sometime in October, all of the survey data once it's made public. So you can view that as well. Thank you for your time. Adrian. I'm sorry, uh, one person is raising their hand now. And oh. All right. I will allow you to talk, Anne, if you could unmute your microphone. Um, I just wanted to say that, that as Coffee Strong, we really appreciate the fact that you made sure that we knew about this meeting. I'm almost embarrassed that nobody else uh, took an interest. But if there's any meetings in the future, we still would like to hear from you and we appreciate all of your time that you're putting into this. Thank you. No problem. And um, thank you for that comment. Um, and, and just to say, because uh, there isn't representation here tonight, doesn't mean um, people haven't participated in the survey. We are actually seeing really good participation. Um, we have a few thousand survey responses. Um, so uh, they and certainly copy park and residents are represented in that. Um, so. And Adrian, now uh, Pamela has raised her hand. Okay. So I will allow you to talk, Pamela, if you could unmute your microphone and identify yourself for public record. My name is Pamela Van Helsema and I'm from Coffee Park. And I, um, I apologize because I had to listen to this at the same time as my child's back to school meeting, which was also at six o'clock. <laughs> of course, that's very important. So I hope it's being, I see that it's being recorded and I would like to review it. Um, but so maybe I'm being repetitive of someone else's comment, I don't know. But I just want to urge our city 
to just do everything in its power with these funds that we don't burn down again. I just think that's the bottom line for me. We just cannot burn down again. So if that means beefing up our fire, fire force, if that means every bit of fire um, uh, mitigation by taking down weeds or you know, making sure there's enough water, whatever, whatever it is, we just have to make it so our, it's not constantly at threat of being burned down. As simple as that. Thank you, Pamela. Any other hands, Tricia? No, at this time there are no more hands. Thank okay, I mean, um, I wanna thank Pamela for reminding me we are recording this meeting and it will be made available on that website URL up on the screen, um, probably in the next day, uh, so that others can view it if they weren't able to catch the full thing or miss tonight's meeting. Um, all right, so if there are no more hands, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you everybody and good night. <laughs>